Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. Well, hail and hello, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back to the deepest, darkest corner of your podcast experiences with the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast coming at you once again from here in Middle Tennessee, broadcasting wide and abroad across Midgard. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Uh, a very special thank you to my channel members, Patreon supporters, uh, anybody out here who is monetarily supporting this podcast through your subscriptions, through your memberships, through your patronage, um, however it is that you're doing it, whatever it is that you're doing, thank you so very much. It is greatly appreciated. You're helping keep what I do um, relevant and, and keeping me into doing what I'm doing or what I'm doing. You know, I feel like it's a it's a definitely a labor of love, as I've mentioned a lot of times before, but having your support behind me in this endeavor really, really helps inspire me to keep on going and makes me feel like it's worth it. Um, so if you are wondering how you can support the podcast in a monetary way, there's going to be a link tree link that's down in the description and linked in the show notes of this podcast, as always. It's going to give you all of the things that I do and, and provide um, as either a goods or a service for um, ways that you can monetarily support. So Ways that you don't have to pay uh, for support is by just simply following and subscribing to the various platforms that I'm on. All of that is linked in the link tree, link down below as well. Um, but if you do want to buy some merch, support the brand, you know, uh, you can do that through Spring. That's linked down there as well. You can become a patron on Patreon just for as little as a dollar a month. Um, it, it, it gives you my undying uh, gratitude and thanks. And uh, you get to be on that special list of supporters. Um, but anyway, enough of that. You guys know the deal. It's all linked down there. You can find it, check it out, see what fits you. Um, but at the very least, um, engaging with what this podcast is, is asking for, whether it be, you know, upvoting, liking the video, sharing it around, commenting, you know, whatever it is, however it is that you're absorbing this podcast, engage on those various platforms and do the thing, do the needful, as we say in the tech industry. For those that are in the Asia-Pacific region, uh, kindly do the needful and revert the same. Um, so yeah, guys, it is mid-February now. Um, some kind of a neat thing is my wife and I, you know, like so many people, I'm sure, um, end up proposing to one another, you know, like the the commitment of a lifelong relationship happens right around mid-February because there's this hallmark holiday called Valentine's Day, right? Um, and, on, you know, not unlike a lot of people, um, I proposed to my wife on Valentine's Day. Very original, Jesse, right? I know. Uh, but anyways, it is what it is. Um, and we've been together now dating, you know, um, since 2015, eight years that uh, my wife and I have been together. Um, I did ask her to marry me, um, you know, just a, about a year or two into our relationship, and uh, we've been trucking along ever since, you know? So that was kind of like a, an anniversary or whatever of, of the time that, uh, you know, she said yes to us. So we've just recently celebrated that. We had a great family dinner. She cooked an amazing... Uh, she does this amazing uh, oven-cooked ribs, pork ribs. Um, they slow cook in the oven, like, all day and uh, just fall right off the bone. Delicious, amazing. Um, had some family over, her parents and uh, some of her um, other relatives. So we got to enjoy that this week. But, yeah, man, mid-February, guys, we're already, you know, a month and a half into 2023. Uh, it's crazy, crazy how fast time is flying. 
Um, so today's podcast, today's episode actually was unplanned for to be on this particular topic of discussion, but it just so happened that as many things do, uh, the randomness abounds, you know, um, you never know when certain things might pop up in, in, a, a group chat or in a, you know, friendly conversation between friends, colleagues, whatever. And the next thing you know, it's, it's sparking conversations elsewhere and, you know, drawing inspiration, uh, to, investigate and to learn and to and to educate and be educated you know so uh that's where this uh this week's podcast episode is 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 coming off of um this was a question um you know the topic of the of of the of the podcast this week is the results of a question being asked by somebody in a in like a closed um group chat and uh, next thing you know, it's I, I you know I didn't have an answer, and I thought hmm, this is an interesting question. I've I've never been, po- you know, uh, posed with this question before, and I didn't have an immediate answer. And I thought let's open it up uh, to the larger community. And uh, lo and behold, in a very relatively short period of time, you know, less than twenty four hours later, we had a lot of discussion circulating around it. So the question is going to be right up here. Um, the screenshot, I should say, of the question is going to be right up here. Um, and it's going to be about the gods, the Aesir gods specifically in Asgard, having an altar or a temple or, or, or something that they sacrifice to or, or, or did blow to or something. And, and who were the gods the gods themselves, who, why, why would such a thing exist amongst the sacred, you know? Um, so here, here's the question. I'm just going to jump right into it because it's, it's, it bears no further, um, delay, right? No further ado. So the question is, uh, so I may have asked this question before, but who do you think the altars in Asgardr were for? Who are the gods sacrificing to or asking for guidance? Could it be their dead ancestors, or the greater being that created the seed, well, which is Yggdrasil. Now, again, um, I was a bit perplexed by that question because, you know, I had never read or I didn't recall reading specifically in the lore um, or anywhere in the sagas, not that I've read all the sagas, I've actually not read a lot of them, you know, front to back, just a lot of excerpts and various key parts of, of a lot of different ones, but I still have a long way to go to consider myself well-versed in, in, you know, source material that are in the, predominantly in, in the, like the, the Icelandic sagas and, and whatnot, um, and that doesn't even cover, you know, regional folklore that just gets kind of passed down orally. Um, but yeah, no, I had never recalled reading anything that, that made reference to there being altars in Asgard, the realm of the gods, the Aesir gods. You know, so when I read, when I saw this question being posed, I was like, do you recall where you read this from? Like, again, was that like a regional folklore um, story or, or, or something that maybe was just passed down orally that we don't have source material? to reflect on and, and, and to see what is said about it to draw a conclusion here? Or, or, or was it, you know, maybe perhaps a, a more um, modern, say, say scholarly work or, or something of, of a much more modern and recent publication? You know, maybe a, maybe a professor, maybe a, some other academic work that, that, that published something somewhere else on a forum elsewhere. You know, where do you remember this? I asked this person, and they couldn't quite remember. They, they said, oh, I got so, so many sagas floating around in my head, which I get it, you know, like especially when you, <laughs> when you go down that, that path, man, you're going to end up in some, um, you could potentially end up going down some rabbit holes and then forget where you, where you left off in. Um, but I thought that was a very interesting question, and it made me go, wow, were there altars, you know, are there altars in Asgard? 
or or any something something of that of that likeness, you know, um, a place for the sacred to go to sacrifice to or ask guidance from some something kind of like how what we have maybe now uh, in 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 the profane, right? We have um, altars in our living spaces. Um, a lot of pagans will dedicate a space in their home, whether it be a bookshelf, um, a table in a corner, maybe a mantle over a fireplace or something, um, or, or any other sort of just dedicated space of, of, of an altar um, for those that have the, the, the outdoor space. And this is something very particularly uh, seen in Germanic, um, you know, the Germanic variant of, of paganism. The, the outdoor altar is called Hörger, um, which is basically just like a pile of stones erected to have for uh, gifts to the Vaitir, gifts to the, the local um, spirits, guardian spirits, uh, whatever name you want to put to them, the whites, right, whatever. Um, and, of course, you know, there's... There's uh, the temple in Uppsala, in old Uppsala, Sweden, that was a dedicated hof or, 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 or heathen temple, uh, which had, you know, walls and, and a roof, and it was, a, it was a, like a church, you know, it was a, a, a temple uh, erected for um, the Aesir and the Vanir gods, or at least to some degree, so, so far as we know. But... To think that something like that would have a place in the realm of the gods themselves, right? Because why are why do we uh, in, as as humans why do we as as individuals and as and as a, a sentient beings in profane space have altars? It is to give us this focus point of dedicating an action or deeds to our sacred beings to the divine. You know, it is where we leave our, our gifts to, whether it be the gods or um, a lot of times, just, you know, again, the localized uh, spirits, um, our ancestors, you know, it is a, a central focus point uh, for us to go to, to put us into that frame of mind to interact with the unseen. So the, the, the question posed, right, was, do you think... Who do you think that the altars in Asgard are there for? Um, I think the bigger question is, why are they there? Why does that even exist? If they existed, first of all, right? Again, there's multiple questions in this question that get raised when you talk about this kind of thing. Because again, if we understand the purpose of what an altar is, and, or what a hugger is, or what the what the ve is, what the hof is, uh, in in the, in those contexts, then then what would that purpose serve for the sacred themselves? They are not the ones that need to sacrifice to something greater than them, right? They are already great. They already are what they are as the divine, uh, you know, um, or at least in a lot of our frames of mind and thinking is, is, you know, it doesn't get any greater than the gods. It doesn't get any greater than um, in terms of, uh, you know, ranking, <laughs> maybe a, a weird way to put it, but it doesn't. You don't get much higher than that in terms of, like you say, the how you how you how you look at things. So why would there even need to be an altar there if there was there? Where what are our sources that suggest such things? So I did. I put this question out there. Got a lot of responses, and almost immediately, um, some of the response points to a stanza in the Edic poem Beluspa. Um, and as many times as I'd read the Voluspa um, and uh, have a copy of it myself and uh, read different translations of it and whatnot, uh, it, it shocked me that I go, wow, man, like something like this just whew, right over my head. You know, like I hearing this person's question didn't trigger a response for me that made me think, yeah, it's probably something from the Voluspa. Or it could have been something from the Beluspa. And having reread the stanza a few times, I think that this person's question is, is uh, largely inspired from this particular stanza. So 
Um, for those that maybe don't have a translation of the Voluspa um, or, or any of the Eddic poems, there's going to be a link in the description and, and in the show notes of the podcast, wherever you're catching it, um, to uh, the website, voluspa.org, I think it is. Um, but it's going to be linked down here. Um, and it's, and it's going to give you an English translation of each stanza of the Voluspa. Some commentary of maybe not every single stanza, but a lot of the stanzas. Some some uh, feedback, some some commentary about the meaning or or the or the s- sequence or the order of of the stanzas, as well as the Old Norse uh, translation of the stanzas. Um, and again, it's it's not a it's not a hard thing to come by. It, it's not something that you're going to be struggling to get a a translation of. So if you already have one and you maybe are reading along or you're looking at it and you go, well, that doesn't say exactly what I'm reading. It could just be that that's a variant to the translation that you have. But whatever it is um, that voluspa.org is, is getting from, I don't remember the the English translation where, where who, who, who translated. But here is going to be uh, some stuff popping up here um, on the screen of the specific stanza that was referenced a number of times as, as a response to this person's question of, of whether or not, um, or, uh, or who the gods, uh, or for, first of all, is there an altar, was there an altar, etc. in Asgard, um, and then once we figured that part out, go into the discussion of what were they there for, who were they there for. Um, so first thing that you're going to see up on the screen is stanza seven of the poem Voluspa, uh, this is stanza seven. I'm going to do my best to uh, read it in Old Norse first. Uh, and then we're going to go to the English translation of it. So, stanza seven of the Voluspa. Hytusk esir o idaveli, ther er hög och huf hothimbrudu, afla lögdu aut smidudu, tongir skupu och tol gurdu. Which in English uh, is translated as "At Ivavol met the mighty gods, shrines and temples they timbered high, forges they set, and they smithied ore, tongs they wrought, and tools they fashioned." So um, Ivavol, which could possibly mean field of deeds. Um, uh, you know, it's it's a let's say compound word in Old Norse, but that could possibly mean field of deeds. But this is where we read about in various, um, yeah, mainly the Voluspa, where the gods meet, where they uh, gather t- for counsel. And in the again, and here in this very stanza, it says that that shrines and temples they timbered high. Now again, various translations might say things differently for what those words um, hörg och hof. Um, but again, the hörg or hörger uh, was the heathen altar, an outdoor altar specifically. A hörger is an outdoor thing, and it's essentially just a pile of stones erected to be the uh, place where um, gifts are, are given and, and, and Acts of benevolence to the sacred are performed. Hof, that word hof that we heard in the, the first uh, North, Old Norse translation is what we talked about earlier as this temple. So shrines and temple, hurg um, och hof, is how this particular English translation um, translates it to. So you could say hurg is, is, is an altar, or we could also use the word shrine. I think they're similar in enough, uh, uh, enough of a fashion to not change the meaning so much um, from Old Norse to English, and then the hof again being temple. So um, shrines and temples, they timbered high. They were there. They were erected. They were present at least in this, uh, you know, in, 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 the, in this part or this time frame of... of this being reckoned. Now, I do just want to say, right, that um, as we talk about things of the metaphysical, as we talk about things like this, 
you know, we're, we're looking at lore, we're looking at myth, we're looking at a story. We're not looking at archaeological evidence, we're not looking at, you know, anything to that granular of a level. So a lot of this type of stuff can be left open to interpretation and um, individuals UPG, all right? Um, and you've heard me talk about UPG enough on this channel, hopefully, and on this podcast enough to know what UPG is. But for those that maybe are new, UPG is unverified personal gnosis. It is the it is the um, the thoughts of an individual, right? What we come up with ourselves based off of our own experiences of of, of things of, that are of a nature which cannot be supported or backed up by archaeological and historical evidence. So yes, while we are reading about shrines and temples being timbered high, erected, built, what have you, in the realm of the gods in, in Asgard. The, this is, again, a, a, a poem um, that was definitely published somewhere in the, in the you know, uh, I think it was the what, 10th or 11th century, something like that. Um, probably one of the older primary sources of lore that is available. Um, but there's... You read the Veluspa enough, you or you know, read it a few times. You're gonna, you're gonna see some evident um, influences of of Christianity be bleeding in, especially when it comes down to like, uh, you know, Ragnarok and and it's uh, you know the, the 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 doomsday equivalent or whatever the, the end of times for the gods, right? Like, like there's some equivalencies that you can make to the Christian. Uh, Apocalypse or Armageddon or whatever. So, with that being said, we're going to be leaning into this, knowing those things, um, and 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 I'm going to be sharing with you guys my thoughts on on some things that uh, are are based off of conversations that I've had since this question was posed and since I've looked into some of these things, based off of my own UPG and some of the UPG of others. Um, don't take what I'm saying here and, and say, well, that's the way it is because Jesse said it on a podcast, and so that must be what it is. I would encourage you guys, if you're interested in pursuing this further, to examine it yourself, think about things yourself, maybe look into some things some more, and share it around maybe in your circles and in your communities, get some feedback, get some conversations stirring around this, and share back what you guys find out about it too. Tag me in the in the post, if you have a platform that you're going to want to share it on, um, it's just an idea, just a thought. Okay. Um, so once again, here is our quote unquote evidence, right? And I use that term loosely and I put, put big, great air quotation marks over it. Evidence that altars, shrines and a temple of, or temples exist, had a place, have a place in the realm of the gods. So then we go back to what the original question of, of was, what or who were they there for? What were the altars and, the, and these sacred places there for? Could it be that they were being um, used as places of sacrifice or giving uh, to ancestors, dead, as the person posed, dead ancestors, or a greater being or greater beings um, that have to do with the initial, uh, you know, the creation myth. Something greater even than the gods. You know, so we, we, we've kind of chipped away at, at this, this big iceberg, as it were. We, we've reached a point where we can probably collectively agree that uh, what the stanza in the Voluspa is talking about is actual temples, actual altars. So why are they there? Who are the gods sacrificing to? Who are the gods seeking, you know, counsel from? Well, what could possibly be greater than the gods themselves? It's hard for us to wrap our minds around things like that, especially being mortals, being, you know, beings that exist in this in profane space and having our minds and, and, and everything limited to, to that without really exploring uh, some of the the mysticism side of things, the, the, the metaphysical side of things, 
um, and understanding also the the concepts that these ancient heathens had, the arch heathens had before Christianity, if there's even a place for that in this context. I think there could be, um, just knowing some of the, you know, arch heathen or, or, or ancient heathen uh, concepts of life after death, their, their understanding of, or their worldviews of, of things like that, you know, um, it was very complex. And so I think that at some point in time, um, you know, there was this time where, or movement where the gods, as we know them now, started off as, as being something of a more relatable to humans. Because, and the reason I say this is that you read about the various uh, adventures and the various uh, tasks and, and, and all of the stories and the myths of the various gods and goddesses, and they have very human-like qualities, you know, things that, that put them in a very relatable um, position for us as, as, as mortal human beings. We can relate to the fury of Thor. We can, we can relate to the, you know, incessant trickery of, 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 of Loki. We can relate to the, you know, bravery and, and just selfless actions of Tyr. And I'm just, you know, rattling off the top of my head, just some of these things, right? Like, these are relatable traits. And when we read some of the stories and, and, and the myths, it's like, huh, yeah, the, the gods aren't so much different than us. I think, personally, that, um, you know, a lot of that is due to um, the stories of people, of perhaps kings and, and other great heroes of the times that these sagas, these these not the not the stories of the gods, but the you know the sagas of, of actual people, whether it's kings or warriors or or various famous right uh, people from the time. Uh, I I think that especially when it comes to like the the nobility, royalty, that sort of thing, uh, they were deified. And so, um, I you know especially true when you when you read through like the Inglinga saga, you know where Odin is a king and you know Balder is his son and all these things and it's, it's like oh was that the that may not be England this like I might be thinking of a Saxo Grammaticus but either way right all of these figures all these names all these uh stories had to start from somewhere and so I think again that at, at some point it was something even greater than that because you 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 had to come up with these figures, these relatable figures um, they, that were perhaps deified, and now all of a sudden they are being venerated and worshipped. But what about who they venerated? Who did those kings and all that and whatnot venerate, right, if you want to look at it from, from that angle? Um, and the lore kind of helps fill in those gaps when you read the creation myth and you know like where the gods came from. They came from Ymir, this primordial force, you know, that was the result of ice and fire clashing in, in, in the, 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 the vastness of the cosmos, Ganunga Gap, you know, fire meets, uh, fire meets ice and boom, there you go. All of the, you know, it, it's a great story. It's, it's a great, you know, uh, exceptionally vivid telling of how everything came into being, you know. But uh, those forces, those primordial forces um, had, had, you know, were, were given names and stuff through the lore. And so when we look at this example of there being a temple or shrines or altars in Asgard, in the realm of the gods, you know, and who would they be um, using these these things for? I think um, that it's probably a bit more, de there, there's more detail than, than what we might think. Sure, it could be that they are there for where they came from, the, these these ancient primordial forces of nature that are the reason why they're there. 
And so you could look at that as being a, uh, a sort of form of ancestor veneration because, again, it's, it's their source where, the, you know, where their roots lie, where the gods originate from, their origin story. Um, but then another thing that I get to thinking about, and this, this is thanks to some, again, dialogue and conversation that gets sparked because of these types of things, is the role of the Nornir, the Norns, and how important they are, and how, you know, how the gods themselves, how Odin himself, how the, you know, how they are viewed by the sacred. And I'm going to um, reference another stanza from uh, Voluspa. Um, this is stanza 20. Again, it's going to be up here on the screen. So if you're reading along and you got your own copy, it's going to be probably around stanza 20 or so. It might Again, the order of things could be a little bit different. But anyway, in this translation... Um, it stands at 20. So the first part I'm going to read is, is the Old Norse translation as best I can. So it stands at 20. Thoden koma medier max vitandi friar, or theim sol er und toli stendir, urt heto eine odra verdandi, skaru ascoli os oskidi, skuld Ina thridu, ther luk lugde, ther lifkuru, alda brunum urlug segia. And in English, thence come the maidens, mighty in wisdom, three from the dwelling, down neath the tree. Urth is one named, Verdandi the next, on the wood they scored, and schooled the third. Laws they made there, and life allotted to the sons of men, and set their fates. Now, right before this stanza, you know, so around like stanza 19, give or take, uh, again, depending on the translation, it's, it's, it's talking about Yggdrasil, the world tree, where all the nine realms are connected through, through, through Yggdrasil. Um, and, uh, you know, so the, the Norns are, you know, their dwelling is, is at the roots of, of the world tree. You know, so three from the dwelling down neath the tree. You have Urd, Verdandi, and Skuld. So Urd is what was, or what, or what has happened, so the past. Verdandi is what is becoming, or what is happening, so the present. And then skuld is what shall be, the future. So you've got your past, present, future representations um, in the Norns. And on the wood they scored. So, you, you know, we hear of, of, of this, and, and I think most of the time we, we come up with this imagery of, of them scribing the fates or the or the the lives of, of, of every living thing, gods and men. So everything is allotted, everything is destined, if you will, everything is is made out um, as decreed by the Norns. Um, and this this is also true of of, of the gods, because we read more stories and, and throughout the myths that you know that 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 what the Norns decree is is uh, not outside of of you know the gods don't control what the Norns decree. Odin himself can't change the fate that was de decided him um, through the Norns decree, right? Um, and this raises the the concept or the or the thought that. The altars and the shrines and then the, the temple, what have you, uh, that we hear about earlier in Voluspa that uh, are in Asgard were for them, for the Norns, to appeal to the Norns, to seek wisdom through, uh, through gifting, 
through the gift exchange, through, through sacrifice maybe, um, to appeal to them in a way of changing fate, in a way of changing the decisions that were made when they scribe them, you know, or score them um, in the roots of Yggdrasil and, 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 and whatnot. So, and, you know, it, it makes you think, at least makes me think, um, the role of the Norns in, in our modern pagan practices, for Germanic pagans at least, and, and do we acknowledge them enough? If, if, big if, again, this is heavily, if not entirely, you know, based off of my UPG and the UPG, shared UPG of, of, of others having conversations, right? Um, if these were the things that had sacred space, again, something greater than even the gods, you know, because how can you be great if you can't decide the fate of the sons of men and gods alike? You know, how great can you be if, that, if, if you're limited to what something else decrees or what something else decides for you? That, to me, through deductive reasoning, uh, makes good sense. And so if we think about our involvement, right, it, 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 if the gods themselves had sacred space, have sacred space dedicated to the Norns for dealing with them, um, where, does that, where does that fit into our practice? Do we have that link? Can we have that link? Can, can there be a link established between us and them, or are the gods there, are the gods in place, right? Do the, are, are, are the gods as we know them, do these great and, and sacred and divine beings exist as a, I don't know, mediary between because we got to get to them first before we, before it can get to the norms. I, I don't think it's quite that, that granular, you know what I mean? But it's, it's something interesting to think about, you know, if you want to appeal to the Supreme Court, you know, do you get an audience with the Supreme Court or do you have to go through all these, uh, channels and all these, you know, bureaucratic, steps to get there first. If you were in ancient times and you, you know, sought an audience with the king, did you get a chance to see the king first and foremost, or were you instead put through other, you know, subjective channels to, to vet that process first, and then it made its way to the king, and if it was deemed appropriate, then you were granted the audience. So again, you think about, like, maybe some of the, the time frame of things, or at least I do, you know, when the, when the myths and the stories of the lore and, and the sagas were written and, and when it was all documented and, and you know, it's, it, this is late Iron Age, you know, Scandinavia, uh, when all of this stuff was written down, um, the information is, is, is largely being influenced by the spread of Christianity at the time. You know, what is, what, what is the Christian worldview of... of of, of things, um, you know, at that time, I think the church in England and in, in, in the, the Catholic church was a pretty uh, influential power, you know, and, and that branch of Christianity and was, was very big on, you know, you pray to the saints, you pray to the this, you pray to that, and they, you know, you don't necessarily pray to God directly. Yeah, sure, you could. You pray to God, you go to church, you do all these things. Um, but do you get that immediate audience with the highest, the boss, basically? You know, do you, do you get that, do you get granted that audience just yourself, or do you have to go through these other channels first? So as I talk about it and as I ramble on about it, I get to thinking that why were the altars there? Why are the altars there? Um... probably for the Norns, um, because they are greater than the gods. They have that power of shaping the fates of all, gods and men alike. 
Now, when you talk about that and you start thinking about fate, right, as a thing, it's, it's you know, a set in stone thing. You cannot change your fate. You cannot change the fate that has been written for you. And we look at um, some of, like, other Eddic poems, right? The Hovamol that says uh, that your wealth will die or you know, cattle die, but it's deor fe. So fe is, is a word for wealth. It means cattle, but cattle, wealth will die. You will all, uh, you know, cattle die, kinsmen die. You yourself will also die. One thing that I know will never die is a reputation or the fair fame of one who has earned it. Right? We see that uh, fate in, in the Germanic context is like your fate is, is written to the degree that this is when you're born, this is when you die. But everything else in between, I think, is left open for us to to make it or not we will oftentimes be you know given the the necessary tools to achieve certain things some people will have a better chance of achieving said thing than others uh and this is largely uh and at least in my views on things due to the inherited luck the hamingya that has been passed down through family lines. You know, so there's there's certain things that I would be able to accomplish with greater ease than somebody else. And then that somebody else is going to be able to accomplish things with greater ease, perhaps, than I would be able to because of that inherited luck. It's not the, it's not going to, it's again, it's not that I am uh, fated to be less great than somebody else, but the things that have been passed down to me, laid down in the well, in Orlog, Orle, whatever you call it, whatever, however you pronounce it, inherited through that ancestral luck, that Hamingya, uh, puts people in a better, in a position to accomplish those things. It's not that we are fated to be less or, or more than everybody else. It's, are you going to take what's been given to you and, and Use that for your advancement, or are you just going to not even try? Um, or are you going to say, you know, the hell with what I've been given. I'm going to make it my, I'm going to make things myself, right? Because that's, that's clearly uh, a thing that happens, right? Not everybody is, not everybody's dealt a great hand, you know? The, the, the things that, that some people get uh, passed down to them, some of the things that get, you know, that they inherit are, are, are pretty crappy, Um and some people will use that as, you know, well, and, I, and I've talked to some friends of mine in the past, at least over the years, that have been like, you know what, this is just my lot in life. This is just, this is my fate. I'm just going to forever be a slave. I'm forever going to be, you know, destined to just work myself to the bone. Um, the only way that I'm able to get through it is to, you know, self-medicate. With, through the use of whatever, you know, substances to just numb myself to the point of being able to turn around and do it again the next day until I just eventually expire. Um, I know people like that. And it's, it's you know, I, I have a really hard time. I have a really hard time buying that shtick. You know, I don't think that Anybody is just automatically fated to suck at life and, and be destined for disaster. I think that some people have more going for them than others, and it's going to be more challenging and more of, a, more of an uphill battle over a longer period of time. But I firmly believe that we change our fates to the, to the extent that what happens be, in between of our birth and our death, the day that we die, is up to us. We can make it as great as we want it, or we can settle for just whatever it is um, and not do anything, you know? Um, and, I, you know, looking at this question that's posed, um, 
seeing some of the ways that the stories uh, of the gods play out, especially uh, the ones that involve Odin. He's always trying to change his fate. He's hell-bent <laughs> on changing the inevitable destruction that he's facing, right? Um, you know, so he's, he's, he's almost uh, delusional when it comes to that. If you think about it, it's, it's like, dude, it's going to happen. You can't change it. You can't stop it. And he's so maddened with the ability to try and change it that, you know, he's, he's, he's gone through very extreme methods in order to do so. And I think that there's an important lesson in that too, right? Because you can, you can go too hard in the paint. And you can drive yourself into this, you know, state of, of madness. It is. It's a state of madness. You know? No matter what you gift, no matter the, the, the sacrifices that you make, if that's what's been faded for you, if that was, if that is what the Norns have scored in the wood, then there it is. Um, but do we even know what that what that particular thing is? What is scored in the wood? I believe that what is scored in the wood is you are born a certain time and you die a certain time. Now there are, could be an argument made that um there are things out of life of our of our immediate control right you you don't wake up one day and or people just don't wake up one day and you know accidents that happen of of a tragic nature that drastically change a person's life um in in a negative way whether it be an untimely uh death or an injury or other sorts of you know catastrophic occurrences, um, I think that those things are part of the fate that is scored in the wood, right? I think those are certain key things that have been put down into the annals of history, as it were, for every living creature, every person, every god, every man, every woman, every child by the Norns. Um, but it's not that, well, because of this, now you're just destined to just suck the rest of your life, right? I think that those are things that are put um, in the mix along the way to present ones with the ability to be great, overcome, defeat the challenges, you know? The Christians have this, you know, mindset of... Uh, you know, God doesn't give you anything greater than what he knows you can handle, right? And people put that into a, people get bitter. You know, I've seen a lot of people in life lose their faith in their, in their God because of the challenges that have been put for them, right? Well, if, you know, if, if God was so great, if God loved me so much, then why would he let this happen to me, you know? You know, I, I can't handle this, this. Screw that, you know. They get bitter. They get angry. Um, it's easy to put the blame on a higher power and, and, and to say, you know, well, why would you do this to me? Can't you see I've, I've already, I'm already struggling enough? Maybe there's something similar that's going on with a lot of us as pagans where we try to offset our the things that happen to us in our life, we, we, we try to take, we put the blame off of ourselves. Not that there's, you know, not that we're to blame, but we, we take the um, responsibility off of ourselves of, of doing something about it, and we just blame some higher power or some greater force of some unseen power that, that well, I guess this is just, this is what the gods intended. This is what the Norns decided. I'm just destined to suck the rest of my life. Oh, well, you know, how easy is it for us to get into that frame of mind? How easy is it for us to just lay down and be defeated? You know, um, 
life's not fair, is it? <laughs> I don't think any one of us listening today, watching today, I don't think any of us are exempt from things that have happened in our lives where we go, yeah, I've had it easy, or I've never had it hard. I've never had it difficult. I've never been tested. I've never been pushed to my breaking point. I've never endured ordeal. I mean, if you can, if you can sit here today and say that, I got two things to say. Um, one, just wait. <laughs> it's bound to happen. Um, and, and two, you know, show me how to, show me how. How have you lived in such a way? Teach me your ways. Because <laughs> if you have lived any length of time on this planet, you know, and, and, and have not experienced things of, of a challenging way of, 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 a, of a adversity, of ordeal that has tested you, that has pushed you to your breaking point, and if you're not there yet, or, or if you have and, and, and you've made it through, then I want to know, I want to learn from you. I want to hear what you have to say about ways of dealing with that and, and working through that and overcoming it and not just letting it be the thing that destroys you. Because if you've got that kind of a resolve and, you've, and if you've got that part figured out, then so many people could benefit from that. I could benefit from that. You know, because once again, it's, it's, it's an easy thing to do to just get to that point and just give up, you know, or just be resorted to thinking that there's nothing else for you to do. You, you've done all you can. It's, it's, it's easy, but life is hard. Adversity breeds worth. I've, I've said it many times, ordeal breeds worth, um, this isn't something that I came up with. It's not a phrase that I want to take credit for. Matter of fact, um, you know, for anybody that's listened to me for any length of time knows the, the great amount of respect and admiration that I have for Eric Wordweaver, Shervin, uh, who is the, uh, over at the Raven's Call. You know, he's got the YouTube channel, The Raven's Call, or that's his show, The Raven's Call. He, he was doing a podcast for a while, too. I know a lot of things in his life changed, and he's not able to produce regular content much anymore, but he's still doing things. He's still keeping, you know, some connection with his greater community. Um, and that was the one thing that, you know, I heard him say one time is, you know, adversity breeds worth. Um, it's the hard times that prove our grit, that, that, that really show what we're made of. You know, it's not in the easy times that we're going to be able to, you know, prove how great or how worth we are. It's in the worst of times. It's in the hardest of times. It's in the, it's in the mud, you know, it's in the, it's in the muck. So we have to struggle and, and, and prove that we can get through it. You know, that's where, that's how people are remembered by it. It's not, you know, what they did that was easy. It's what did they do that was so hard that they made it through and that, you know, that's that's how people are remembered. That's that's the fair fame that is won that does not die. You know, you have to earn it. You have to work hard for it. And if the things along the way that get quote unquote scored into the wood that get decreed by the norns, you know, that's not the end of it. You're not dead yet right? You still got a ways to go. You've still got steps to take. You've still got work to do. And what's happening right now that's making it difficult, that's making it a pain in the ass, you know, you can either, <laughs> you can either run from it or you can learn from it. And I just, I laugh because I remember growing up as a kid watching that uh, Disney movie, The Lion King, you know, and, and Simba ran away. 
he ran away from from his life that he was destined for, that he was fated for, because he was pushed into a a, a very catastrophic, life changing experience. Right, his uncle killed his father. He didn't know it at the time, but his father was dead. The king is dead. And he's a young prince. And what am I going to do? And he's told to just run away. Because people are going to think that you did it. Run away. Run away from your problems. But guess what? You got to come back and face it. And that's that whole line where I say, you know, you can either run from it or learn from it. Rafiki, you know, that old baboon that, that shows up there and was 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 with Simba from the day that he was born, you know? And, uh, you know, he's in there and, and Simba doesn't remember, but of course Rafiki remembers Simba because he was there and he, he smeared the gourd on his forehead. He was there from the moment the kid popped out of, you know, his mom. And, and, and Simba's like, you know, it hurts the past, you know? The, these memories, all these things, they hurt. And Rafiki says, yes, yes, the past can hurt. But you can either run from it or learn from it. So, what are we going to do? What are we going to do today after talking about UPG and altars in Asgard? And good gracious, man, like the gods are sacrificing to things that are greater than themselves. I even saw a comment um, on the page that said, uh, Look, can we, uh, can we, what does it say? It said something along the lines of, uh, look, can we, uh, can we just agree that Odin is the type to have had an altar for him to sacrifice to himself? And I go, <laughs> you're not wrong. I mean, the, the guy, you know, gouged out his own eye to take a drink from Mimir's well. He, he, he hung from the root, he hung from Yggdrasil for nine days and nights to receive the knowledge of the runes, as it were. And, and he, he, you know, during that whole ordeal, he's pierced himself on his own spear, a sacrifice of himself to himself, you know? So somebody's like, well, the altar's in Asgard. Odin probably erected it, you know, just for his own, to sacrifice to himself. And I go, <clears throat> that sounds like a really Odin thing to do. But, um, again, <laughs> UPG and all, right? We, we, we talk through it, we... we analyze we we come up with some things and i think that with it all you know one of the th one of the i think most important things to take away from this is there are things greater than even the gods and the gods have acknowledged that from you know if you want to if you want to take mythology and lore into the equation if you want to work that into the to the mix of things. And we should too. We should realize that there are things by design that are greater than our perception of the gods and who and what they are. And that they, like, and us, uh, are all subject to that greater force, that greater thing, that primordial powers, those primordial powers. You know, the things that have been there the things that are being manifested now and the things that will be manifested. It's, it's ongoing. It's never-ending. Cyclical, right? So um, I'm anxious to hear what you guys think. This was, this was again, um, not, a, not a very long planned in advance sort of thing because this conversation stemmed from a, a, a chat that happened earlier in this week. Um, so thank you to the folks at the Fireside Chat that I'm in. Um, I won't go ahead and name names just out of respect of privacy and people's lives. Um, but you're going to see this hopefully and you'll know who you are. Uh, so thank you to all of those who um, were involved in this, this uh, conversation and this discussion. Um, and let me know what you guys think. Let me know where your mind is on this whole subject and where else you may have seen this particular topic come up. I know some other people um, along the way have made reference to an author named, uh, I think he's a, he's, he's, either, he's either a, um, he's either got a master's degree or, or a doctorate. Neil Price um, has a book called The Viking Way. Uh, I believe somewhere in that book, he references maybe something like what I'm talking about, what's in the Voluspa. I haven't read it. Maybe you guys know. 
anything else anywhere else that you've seen or heard. Um, I've seen some really interesting comments pop up that I can't recall off the top of my head right now. But um, yeah, whatever you guys have heard, seen, read, um, cite your sources if you don't mind, please, because I would love to research it further. You know, don't, and that's one of the things is like people say, well, I think I read somewhere one time um, about this, you know, and they, and they go off on it. I'm like, man, that sounds really interesting. Can you give me a lead? Because how do you, where do you go from that? You know, you just start Googling words or, you know, asking questions. I have no idea where to go with some of the, uh, some of the commentary that I get on some of these things. So if you do mind, if you don't mind, I should say, when you have a, a source that you're going to try to reference, if you could cite it so that way myself and others can can do our own digging because like um i forget there was one particular thing that was said that uh made me think man if you just had a source on that i would love to read more about it but here we are um we asked some questions we got some answers had some dialogue opened it up to everybody out here to listen and and hear so uh yeah let us know what you guys think I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, so that concludes this week's episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. If you do like what I do and you enjoy it and, and want to see and hear more, be sure to like or upvote this episode. Share it around in your various communities. Subscribe to this channel on YouTube, the Midgard Musings YouTube channel. If you're not yet already, be sure to have notifications enabled across all devices, not just on the YouTube platform, but on all devices as well. So if you're a mobile user, make sure that your notifications for the app are turned on so you get notified every time that I upload new content because I do short-form content as well throughout the week when and as I can. Sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's educational, sometimes it's a little bit both. Um, but yeah, if you want to see and hear more, be sure to do all those things. Thank you for listening and tuning in to this week's episode. Until we talk again... May the gods continue to notice you, and may your ancestors smile upon you. <laughs>